Hey everyone, Mr. McIntosh here, and Apple just released macOS Ventura 13.2 update. In this video, I'm gonna go over everything that you're gonna to need to know about this update, including new features and fixes, Apple security updates, Apple enterprise changes, rapid security response updates, and of course, for unsupported Macs, hot off the press, open core legacy patcher news. We got a lot to cover, let's jump in and get started. Along with 13.2, Apple also released macOS Monterey 12.6.3, macOS Big Sur 11.7.3, and Safari 16.3, which was released as a separate download for Big Sur and Monterey and is included in 13.2. Xcode remains the same at 14.2. On the iOS side, Apple released 16.3 and 15.7.3 for both iPhone and iPad. And they also released watchOS 9.3. You'll notice that HomePod OS and tvOS is not here because they released it earlier this afternoon, but then pulled the update. So it's still available in beta. Well, hopefully we'll see that in the next day or two. Our demonstration Mac here today is a 2020 M1 MacBook Air running Mac OS Ventura 13.1. To update, all we need to do is open up the brand new system settings. We should see here a software update available. You can click on that or click on general and then software update. And then you gotta give it a second here and it should show Mac OS Ventura 13.1. To get more information about it, all you need to do is hit on more info here. And then to see the description of the update, you need to select this and you can see all the changes and fixes in this release. All we need to do now is click on install now, click agree, let's enter in the password here, and then I'll automatically start to download Mac OS Ventura 13.2. And we'll start timing how long it's gonna take to install. Okay, we're back and the update is finished and we are now on macOS Ventura 13.2. The build version is 22D49 and that is the same as the RC or the release candidate. So if you installed that late last week, you do not need to install the update. You're on the fully updated version. Now let's take a look at how long it took to install the update. If we can take a look at the notes here, I track every single update and how long it takes and we've got the fastest ever. It only took 10 minutes from start to finish to install the 13.2 update on this M1 device and that's a new feature feature of Mac OS Ventura, faster updates for M1 and M2 devices, so it's really great to see. Another thing I keep track is, is how large is the system drive before and after the update. Before we updated on 13.1, it was 13.16. And then after the update, we have 13.41. So not very much of an increase at all, but we want to just keep an eye on that. The other thing I wanted to mention too was the system data. That's all the data that you store on the system on the Macintosh hard drive data. You'll actually notice this jump from 17 as I had all the way up to almost 20 because when we were downloading the update, it was preparing in this space and you can actually watch it climb while it's downloading. But once it's done installing the update, it removes those files. So it's just like it was before you started. The 13.2 update also updated the M1, M2 firmware to 84.19.80.7. And you can see that in your system information menu, you can go down here to the system firmware version so you can see that. And it also shows you the OS loader version that was also updated for Mac OS Ventura. I've got that here. And if you have a T2 Mac, the bridge OS was also updated. Apple also released an M1, M2 IPSW restore file for Apple Configure 2 to restore your Mac and a full installer app so you can create a USB installer for 13.2. Now let's go over some of the new features of the 13.2 update. And one of the biggest ones is security keys are now going to be able to be used to be able to protect your Apple ID on your Mac with Mac OS Ventura 13.2 and newer. The way the two-factor authentication works now with your Apple ID, you type in your password, that's the first factor. And the second factor is your six-digit security code that you have texted or sent to your secondary device, whether it's an iPad, iPhone, or another Mac. Now what's great about the security keys is that you have to have a physical device to be able to access your account. A security key is a small external device that looks like a thumb drive or a tag, which can be used as verification when signing in to your Apple ID using two-factor authentication. But with security keys, this is a new piece that will strengthen the two-factor authentication process to help prevent your second authentication factor from being intercepted or requested by attacker. So that's important because the new way of getting access to people's IDs and Apple accounts and stuff like that now is more phishing and that is the newest thing that we have to keep an eye on. And you might think, well, wait a minute, how are they gonna get a second factor authentication code? Well, the new scams are being sent to so many people. The actor is acting as whether it's a support agent for the company or an Apple Care support agent, and they would reach out saying, hey, there's a problem with your account. 
and we will help you fix it, but you need to verify this is you first, and then they send you the code. And if you read them the code, they can actually get into your account with that code. With security keys, there's no phishing involved because they don't have this key. If you have someone who is in a position where they're attacked a lot, whether they're a celebrity or a politician, a security key is a really great way to protect them. This article goes on to talk all about the keys and show what kind of devices and platforms they use. And I'll put a link to this in the description. The next new thing is Apple added new wallpapers for the brand new MacBook Pro 16 inch and 14 inch. And you can take a look at those by going into the wallpaper section and then going under the light and dark and you can click on this and change the background to the new wallpapers and really like those. The next new feature that Apple enabled in macOS Ventura 13.2 is rapid response security updates. Apple already enabled this in iOS, but now it is enabled in macOS. And I created this database here that you can take a look at that I'm going to track the rapid security response updates and you'll be able to see when they come out and they are gonna show as, for example, 13.2A or 13.2B. And the way that's gonna work is, is let's say between the updates, for example, 13.2 to 13.3, a big security vulnerability comes out and Apple wants to patch that before waiting for the big update maybe two months later. Well, now they can release a rapid security response update and that can go right into your system preferences. And let's take a look what that looks like. This is what the update's gonna look like in your system settings software update pane. It'll say macOS security response 13.2B or A or whatever. And it'll be small or large. And that's going to be two versions. One can actually patch the operating system and the second second one can just patch Safari and make you just close that Safari. But if it has to patch the operating system, it is actually going to require a reboot. But the installation is quick and it will keep your Mac fully secure. The good thing is, is that after the rapid security response update comes out, if you skipped it for whatever reason, it'll be wrapped into the 13.3 updates. I'll show you how to install and uninstall because you can actually uninstall them once the first RSR update comes out. Now let's look at some of the fixes in the 13.2 update. The first fix revolves around the Freeform app, which is actually introduced in the 13.1 update. And there was an issue where if you were using an Apple Pencil or your finger to draw something, it would not appear on the shared boards for everybody to see. Next issue was with the VoiceOver app that might stop offering audio feedback if you're typing. And now let's look at some of the enterprise and education fixes and improvements in the macOS Ventura 13.2 update. First of all, there's a new feature now where M MDM can now restrict those rapid security response updates that we talked about earlier. The profile's new command can now succeed for an enrollment when the profile check-in URL is changed. There was also an issue where if you were in macOS recovery and you saw the language selection screen and you click next, it would freeze. And this actually ha happened to more people than just enterprise customers. This was happening to normal users that was trying to reinstall it by going into recovery. Now there was also an issue in system settings that would prompt an Apple ID settings when no Apple ID was even signed in. Let's take a look at that over here. I've got a screenshot of that and this is the error message that you would get. And this would pop up saying, hey, you need to sign in, but then there's no one here to be able to sign in and no one ever signed into iCloud on the device before. And finally, if you had a web block file like a Safari or a web file and you wanted to be able to open it up in a browser, it will now look and use the default web browser that you have selected. Now let's go over the security content of the 13.2 update. I keep track of how many vulnerabilities Apple fixes with each update. I'm looking for zero days. I'm looking for a note in here that, that Apple is aware that this issue may be being exploited in the wild. There's none of those that I've seen in this update, but there is 22 individual security fixes for the 13.2 update. There's 18 on the OS side and Safari and WebKit have four. Now for macOS Monterey though, on the other hand, there's only 14 and there's two for Safari and WebKit. And for Big Sur, only seven and Safari WebKit and two. Cause again, that goes back to what Apple said. They only keep the latest operating system fully 100% secure to all the vulnerabilities that they're aware of. Now let's take a look at the Geekbench 5 benchmark score. For 13.1 on this same system, we had a 1761 single and a 7780 on the multi. And after we installed 13.2, we had a 1750 on a single and a 7792 for a multi. And again, when we run this, we're looking for big swings. We want it to be right on target. Anytime I run the benchmark scores, I make sure all apps are closed. And I make sure after the updates installed that the spotlight indexing and all that stuff is finished just to get the proper accurate score. 
Now let's talk about some open core legacy patcher news for your unsupported Mac. And there is some huge news for Mac OS Ventura and non-metal Macs is now available in a beta form. There's so much stuff to go over. I talked to McCullough about the patch notes here and he created some of the most in-depth patch notes that I've ever seen for a open source project. This puts Apple's Mac OS patch notes to shame. I'm going to be covering all this in an update video tomorrow that covers 0.6.0 and 0.6.1. Uh, 0.6.1 came out later because there was an issue with some AMD installs but that's been smoothed over now and I again I'll talk about that tomorrow but 0.6.1 is good to go and I've got my test demonstration Mac here which is a 2016 15-inch MacBook Pro running 13.2. I'm going to go over all that tomorrow in my 0.6.1 Open Core Legacy like Patcher update video. And after that, I'm going to give you a full complete walkthrough on how to install Open Core Legacy like Patcher on your non-metal Mac because there's definitely some extra steps that we're going to have to follow. So look for that later this week. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, you can give the video a thumbs up or a share. I'd really appreciate it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, you can click on that Mr. Macintosh icon right here to subscribe to the channel. For the latest Mac news, you can follow me on Twitter and Mastodon. And I wanted to thank all my viewers and especially my Patreon members. You guys are absolutely great. And I truly appreciate you. And we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.